Hello everyone and welcome back to the Second City podcast. Finally, uh, it's been quite a few weeks, so it's lovely to be back. Uh, my name's Daniel Sketchlow. And I'm Callum Byrne. We're going to be um, obviously catching up because we've been away for about, what, three, four it's weeks? Three it's been weeks? a while, isn't it? Maybe just, it's somewhere uh, in between, longer, maybe, think... yeah. Oof. Yeah, um, so obviously a lot has happened between Blues and Villa. It's been a very eventful few weeks. Pretty typical that like one of the most eventful periods in both clubs kind of modern you know the last few years for both clubs some really kind of signature moments and we kind of weren't there to cover it because uh we, we just had a really busy few weeks in our personal yeah. lives and stuff um but all is well we're delighted to be back we're gonna do just kind of a little catch up because it is the international break we're not gonna exactly follow like our normal format just a bit more of a general kind of catch up review of where we're at so far thoughts on the season so far it might be a little bit more informal um, but hopefully uh, we have a really good time and, and you guys enjoy it. We'll have a little look at the other Midlands clubs as well and just a little catch up on their season so far. And of course, we'll do a little bit of housekeeping, a little bit of extra news going on um, in kind of the world of Second City, West Midlands football. So, Cal, um, how have you been? Everything OK? Yeah, not not too bad. Um, it, yeah, it's been a while since we did one of these. So um, obviously I, I wasn't here for the last one and then I'm going away again next week and it's all it's just the merry-go-round never really stops so I'm glad we found time to squeeze this in because it's been as, as you said been mad we've got so much to talk about um maybe a slightly more informal as you said because there's some great stories that would have been brilliant for the pod in the last couple of weeks so we're gonna go maybe a trip slightly back in time by a couple of weeks to bring them here yeah but absolutely anyway, but before all that well? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Thank you. Yes, I'm okay. Thank you. Yeah, I'm good. Um, yeah, I'm good. Pleased to be back doing the pod. That's uh, that's nice. It's very, very cold uh, tonight. It is absolutely freezing. We're recording this quite late, actually. We don't normally do it this late. Um, but no, yeah, it's, uh, it's all, good. all good. Thank you very well. Um, shall we get into what we're wearing to start with, though? As uh, start what we always do. Yeah, I had to... I was digging through to find shirts there's, a, there's only a very very small handful that i haven't but got on here yeah so we are sort of reusing a few as well um so i am wearing a shirt i have worn before so i think i should go first because i think that's a new one from you yeah this is i haven't worn this one before okay well guess i'll guess yours first then so it's a nike acorns home shirt pretty kind of simple in design there's not too much like distinguishing about it i guess it's a bit more of a simplistic one no that's not a criticism at all by the yeah. way um uh round neck collar weird sort yeah. of like stripe on the shoulder panel yeah um and there is a player on the back as well it's if we okay. can get it in shot Esky. no it's uh it's petrov 19 no but yeah that was the episode i wore this on though last season was the Hesky. oh right okay interesting the oh Hesky well it's going to be around so. that era then uh i'm going to say it might be it's kind of late noughties or early tens. Um, I'm gonna say 2008, nine. No, it was, yeah, 2008-9 home. You're very close. It's 0910 home. Okay. So not not too bad. Obviously, this uh was Martin O'Neill's last home shirt as Aston Villa manager. Um, this is the year that we got to the. The then Carling Cup final, um, where we wore this shirt in the final, uh, that's just behind me, uh, where we were absolutely robbed against Manchester United. Um, obviously, we had the very, very, very famous semi final win over Blackburn, where we wore the home shirt in both of those games. Uh, we did get to an FA Cup semi final as well, uh, where we got battered by, would it have been Ancelotti's Chelsea back then? I think it might have been. Yeah, yeah, um, they, they won the double that year. Yeah yeah so um but great memories from back then uh we would have played in uh the uefa cup in this kit uh it's not the 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 shirt from the ajax season i think is this one would have been when is this the one with where we th basically threw the game against csk moscow i think it might be um but anyway it was uh, up until the last few years, this was as good as it had gotten in our generation for being an Aston Villa fan. These were the real highs. 
you know, we were, we had such a great team back then, you know, the likes of Ashley Young and James Milner, um, Pete Gabby Bodlehor, John Carew, Stillian Petrov. Um, uh, maybe, you know, a pro, uh, you know, there's been a lot of trends on Twitter recently of like Barclays Premier League era players of like that sort of late noughties, early 2010s. And I feel like you look at our team from back then, um, it was like a proper Barclaysman kind of team with with players like that. Um, but yeah, great shirt, great memories. Um, we never quite made the Champions League Champions League under Martin O'Neill. We have now, but I'm sure we'll talk about that a little bit later. Yes, and did you go to both of the Wembley trips that year? You had um, I did. Yeah, so it was the first time I ever went to Wembley was the Carling Cup final, and uh, we went in a limousine. From uh, Bourneville all yeah, the way down um... to to Wembley, <laughs> it's the yeah, only it's way to go to a cup final. Living up to a few it's... Villa stereotypes there. <laughs> well, we went wow. to the mm. we went we went on the, the only train way to come to the back is with a trophy. The, tro- the only way to come back is with a trophy as well, Carl. Yeah. <laughs> um, cool. What do you think I'm wearing then? Oh, that looks like an original as well. Um, so it's a yellow Lecoq Sportif. Um, Auto windscreens, navy blue on the shoulders. Um, the badge as well, for some reason, like a couple of the shirts, I believe of this era, is in like an oval shield, and which is in complete um, royal blue, and the badge is all white. Um, oh, I'll give you a clue. Yeah, I might I might need it. So a weird similarity. We were also in the League Cup final this year, and were also robbed. Ah, oh, so, uh, this is where I was. Th- so this was the era I originally thought because the shirt looks very early two thousands, but the Lecoq Sportif would imply maybe a decade earlier than that. Uh, so that's kind of what was throwing me. So I think it's around two thousand and two, two thousand and three. Very close. Uh, this was two thousand, two thousand and one. Um, yeah. So this was Trevor Francis was the manager, and this was the I think it was the middle of three consecutive seasons where we finished fifth in the D- D- Division One, what is now the Championship. Um, weird season in the league. So we, we fin- yeah, we finished fifth and then lost in the playoffs to Preston North End, who beat us on penalties in the semi-finals. Obviously, a year later, we would we would also finish fifth but win the playoffs. And it was really weird because obviously I don't remember this season, but since the VHS as a season review as a kid, and obviously like as a, as a Blues aficionado, n- know the details. But um, I think it was with about twelve games to go, we were actually third and had actually just been on a really insane winning run. And we're looking very good to maybe sneak automatic promotion. But in our last 12 games, and this sounds very familiar of Blues when they're having a good season, the last 12 games, we didn't really step up to the mark at all. I think we went 10 straight games without winning. And then we did win the last two. So we ended up finishing fifth. And then obviously, as obviously as I mentioned, we ended up in the playoffs instead and it didn't work out. Um, big signing of this season was Jeff Horsfield came in from Fulham, obviously a Blues um, a blue. A, Blues legend, really, and I, I believe he was the club's record signing at the time as well. Pretty mad. This was this is twenty twenty four years ago, and two point two five million was our record signing. Obviously, we've just beaten that with about tw- fifteen to twenty million. But um, Jeff also had obviously a bit of a club legend. Scored a couple of goals against Villa. Scored in the player final the following year. Um, been very lucky to meet him personally as well. So uh, he's a lovely guy. Um, so but yeah, one of my sort of favourite Blues players, definitely West Bromwich Albion hero um, as well. Absolutely, yeah. Part of the Great Escape in um, 2004, five, I think, um, at West Brom. Uh, obviously, though, the real kind of memory of this season is, as I mentioned, the League Cup final. So Blues, obviously now we've won it twice, but at the time I'd only won it once. We won it in the 60s, 1963, I think it was, when we beat, actually beat Villa in the final. And got to the final this year whilst being a second division team and we played Liverpool in the final. That's like pretty mad. That'd be like, you know, a championship team playing... Obviously, Liverpool at the time weren't then what they are now quite, but be like playing like Man United or someone now. Went 1-0 down to a Robbie Fowler goal, and then in the 90, 90th minute or in stoppage time, Blues actually got a penalty in front of their own fans in the Millennium Stadium because, of course, Wembley was being rebuilt. And Darren Purse, the centre-back, steps up and smashes it in to take it to extra time. Of all the kind of things, obviously, I don't remember as a Blues fan or that happened just before my time, I like wish I I can't imagine how mad that must have been. Um, 
I think my uncle and my granddad were there, I believe. I should probably ring their ear about it sometime. But, um, yeah, I can't imagine how insane that must have been. Like a last-minute equaliser against Liverpool when you're in the second division at the Millennium Stadium in a cup final. That must have been insane. And then, obviously, it became famous as well for, in extra time, Blues very much, and I don't, this is not me being biased, Blues absolutely should have had a second penalty in extra time for a foul on Andrew Johnson. He went on to play for Crystal Palace and Everton and so on. I think he played for England as well, actually, eventually. Um, I think he did, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, the penalty is more Stonewall than the one that was given in, in normal time. Uh, I think David Ellery was the referee, who also interestingly refereed the Blues Villa game, the Enkelman game, about 18 months later. Um, he was slightly more on our side that day, thankfully. <laughs> he gave us the benefit of the doubt that day. Um, yeah, real, like, must have been really bizarre. And I can imagine if I was around, like, there to see it at the time, that must have been a day of such insane emotions, especially Blues they beat on the way to the final, like, Spurs, Newcastle, famously beat Ipswich 4 0. Was it 4 0 or 4 1 in the second leg of the. Uh, of the semi-final at St Andrews. Um, so, yeah, I kind of wish I'd been around for all that. But obviously the club did make amends 10 years later when they won um, a Wembley against Arsenal. So that healed the wound somewhat. But, yeah, so this is 2000, 2001 away. The yellow is lovely. I really love this kit. I love the baggy style. I believe this is original. This is my cousin Pierce owns this. Uh, yeah, I'm sure it's an original. Love the colour. Yeah, beautiful kit. Blues and yellow. Can't go wrong. So, yeah. Well, that'll take us nicely on to uh, where I wanted to go next, which is the League Cup third round, I believe, um, a couple of weeks yeah. ago. Um, obviously, Wickham Wanderers drew Aston Villa in the third round of the League Cup. We spoke about it about three weeks ago. Um, I, and I did go. I did manage to go. Um, obviously not in the away end, sadly, um, but I was in the home end. And I met Unai Emery. Along with Jacob oh, yeah. Ramsey and John Duran, but I met the man himself, Unai Emery. It wasn't like a sit down for a cup of coffee or anything like that. It was just uh, passing by, got a picture with him. Um, never seen my dad so starstruck in my life. It was quite <laughs> and absolutely fantastic. But a real quirk of Adams Park. And you would have seen it when maybe um, when we all went earlier on in the, the season. Game, yeah. Yeah, so we had the tickets in the same, we had tickets for the same place, which is right by the away end. Um, but the entrance in the home end is at the other end of the ground and you have to walk all the way up and you have to walk across the tunnel. And so we were the, we got there for when the bus arrived. Um, so we saw the Aston Villa bus come in um, and then we just went straight into the ground and it just happened to be a handful of players were on the pitch along with Unai Emery, Monchi and Damian Vinagani all doing like the pitch inspection before the game. And because of the quirk of Adams Park, we literally just stood on the tunnel and just caught them as they were all coming off off the pitch one by one. And uh, um, yeah, there was a few other people there having stuff signed and pictures. And there's a lot of Villa fans in that way. End. And there were, even still, there were, you know, for Wickham fans, you know, Unai Emery and some of the, you know, John Duran's like one of the hottest strikers in Europe right now and players like that. So yeah. Um, but yeah, it was absolutely great. Uh, we got uh, we got up the villa out of Unai Emery, and uh, yeah, fantastic. Um, yeah, nice. No, because I was going to ask, um, did he like? Did he assume you were home fans? Or I mean, I'm assuming he he probably worked out what was going on. Like... Yeah, I mean, we you know we weren't wearing weren't wearing any colours, so um, you know just to be safe. Even though I did see someone in a villa shirt in in the, the Wickham end, but it's not worth not getting in, you know? Oh, of course. Yeah. No, absolutely. Um, yeah, of course. So, and you won it. Yeah, well, to, to yeah we did. Pretty successful we were, Got we, a bit we lucky. Were, we were bloody terrible. <laughs> we were rubbish. Yeah. But yeah, then yeah. I guess it was one of those games we made like 11 changes, I think maybe like 10 or 11 changes. Um, We looked a bit disjointed players coming back from injury kids who are, you know, only mate, making their either their debuts or one of a very very few appearances so far um and it was also you know i i love the league cup i'd love to see us win the league cup this year but i think if we're being honest it is currently the least pro it's the lowest priority right now um it's yeah. it, that game was slap bang in between premier league games and then our first two ch our first two champions league games so it completely was just 
a game that we probably didn't want or need, to be perfectly honest. Um, so, I, you know, and I think that's kind of why we were able to get a selfie with Unai Emery was because it's that, you know, he was there in a tracksuit, in his jeans, it, it, it tracks it, you know, full tracksuit, no suit, no tie, nothing. He was just there like, it's just like a night watching football for him, I think. I, I've never seen, yeah. you know, when you see him at Villa Park or like before the Bayern Munich game, and he comes off the bus and he's like so hyper-focused, like um might just like give a, a wave to the crowd but might not even look at them he'll just be straight in the building because it's all about the game as whereas this was completely different he was really relaxed and it was like well if we win, we should win and if we don't now well never mind sure it's not the first time you've met a villa manager is it i know you met martin o'neill i think you've mentioned that I'm, before yeah i met martin o'neill twice three times um you met any others gerard no, I didn't meet Gerard. I did meet Diego Forlan <laughs> at the World Cup the other year. Um, <laughs> yeah, oh, famous Villa manager Diego Forlan. No, yeah. I'm trying to. Th- no, I, no. I don't think I've met that. That's many, a cool like, person to have met, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I've met that many footballing yeah. people. Really, I probably met mm. more Formula One drivers than I have footballers, to be honest. Um, yeah, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. But like, I've seen, like, I've seen the building that I work in. There's a lot of ex-pros in there, but we're not really allowed to talk to them or stop them for selfies or anything. So, like, I've like, yeah. Um, I saw like Clint's I you met in there once, didn't you? I I did meet Clint's in there actually, and I was wearing my villa hat at the time, and we ex- exchanged a nice little <laughs> laugh a laugh with each other. Yeah. Um, I do remember I bumped into Frank Lampard. It was literally just as he'd taken the Chelsea job, which was about two weeks after the playoff final. Mm. And I was wearing oh. like I was wearing an Aston Villa jacket in a meeting in like this out like breakout area as he walked past and he like clocked me in the jacket and was just <laughs> like that for like for God's sake. Kind of um mm. I think that was the day the Premier League managers all came in to talk about VAR. It was the first time they'd been introduced to oh. VAR just before them. But, mm. but yeah. Uh, and we also met, I think I said, we met Jacob Ramsey, we met John Duran coming off the pitch as well. But we didn't get a picture with John Duran because yeah. Emery was coming off and we had to, you know, priorities, I think, really. Yeah, yeah. fair enough, yeah, fair enough. Um, what have you made of, like, the last few weeks and for Villa in general and, I guess, your season so far? Obviously, it is an international break. feels like a bit of a natural point to maybe evaluate can... and kind of maybe have a little catch-up. Yeah, break comes at a good point for us just because of injuries, I think. Um, mm. they're just starting to pile up a little bit, just niggly injuries, really. Uh, like Ezri Konza got, uh, went off after about 10 minutes against Man United on, on Sunday, just gone. John McGinn's out with a hamstring. Matty Cash has literally only just come back from a hamstring as well. Um, and we're slowly bringing back Tyron Mings and Bubakar Kamara, who made their first minutes since they did their ACLs, um, so the break comes at a good point. Cons has not gone on international duty. Emmy Martinez is banned from international duty this time. So yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah um, which is great for for us really because it just means he stays at stays here. Um, hmm. Yeah, I think it was sort of within the expectations of what I thought before the season, but have slightly, but have exceeded them at the same time. I don't think we've been amazing, mate, apart from a couple of games here and there. Um, because I, and that goes along with what I thought before the season of, we might be a bit slower starting, but the, the points tally doesn't reflect that because we've actually accumulated quite a lot of points. We've only lost one game in the entire season so far, which was Arsenal in a game that I thought we played really well in. And we're a bit unlucky not to get anything out of. Um, I felt that we've been quite leaky, um, which was the same last year. We let a lot of goals in and it's arguably been a bit worse. I don't know. We're a bit of a weird team at the moment. We, you know, we let two, like we let two goals in against Ipswich and then kept a clean sheet against Bayern Munich. Like it doesn't really <laughs> doesn't make any sense yeah. to be honest. Um, the Ipswich game is a bit weird. I think if we'd have played them at home, we'd have won that day, but it's a quirk of, you know, they've got the premier, you know, they're, the promotion Premier League bounce, the, the away games there are going to be tough. It's, uh, you know, um, and we weren't weren't very good on the day, and we let a couple of soft goals in, and you know maybe Villa teams of the past would have lost that game. So it's you know it's not a terrible point at the end of the day. Yeah. Man United at home, we never beat them, so a point is more than we got last year. So I'll take it. Um, yeah, but yeah, I. I I think you know somebody said to, uh, somebody said to me the other day that we maybe look more like a knockout like a 
knockout football style team, like maybe more than a league team. And maybe I would agree with that. We're kind of built for knockout football. Um, but you know, six points from six in the Champions League cannot complain. At I was going to say, all. yeah, I think you're being a bit harsh, honestly. Yeah, yeah well, may, maybe, maybe. I, I, I just because I, I, you know, I think when we're at our very absolute best, we can be a lot better than than what we've shown. And I, I think when when we're at our, when we're not on it, like realistically, we should be should have beaten that Man United team. They did not come to Villa Park to try and win the game. It was all about get a point, keep Ten Hag in the job. Maybe if we'd have played them a week earlier, we might have beaten them. It's hard to say. Mm. Um, but no, it has been a really, really good start. And yeah, enjoy the Champions League ride because Wednesday, Wednesday night last week was insane. It's probably my favourite. It's going to take something to ever top that a night like that at Villa Park. That was unbelievable. Um, and what yeah. a goal. <laughs> what a goal to win it. Yeah, um, I've only seen the goal. I didn't. I genuinely was working, so I didn't see any of the game. I saw the goal afterwards, but yeah, like soured my week. So, <laughs> like, you know, did you expect it? Was it like, did you any part of you think you might get something? Or, I mean, I, to be honest, going to the game, it was kind of like whether we, you know, whatever the result, if we get beat six now, whatever, just enjoy it because you never know the next time. It might not ever happen again. We've only played Bayern Munich once before in our history, which is when we beat them in the final of the European Cup in 1982. So it was like, enjoy it, whatever. And like, I don't know, you kind of, I think, as the excitement builds going into the game, you, you kind of go, you kind of get that sort of, um, oh, mate, what if, what if, maybe we can, maybe we can. And to be honest, the longer the game went on, the more maybe I kind of believed we might be able to nick something um at half time at nil nil obviously we'd had the disallowed goal but it kind of felt like maybe we could win this this but you know Bayern were Bayern weren't like they weren't terrible but they weren't amazing on the night either but they were still you could still see the quality that they had in that I remember there was a point the substitutes were warming up in front of us it was in the first it would have been in the first half and it had they had like Goretzka Muller uh Musiala mm. Sane and it's like Jesus Christ what a bench <laughs> like yeah, we are, yeah. you know, when we've got like, um, you know, a half croc demi Buendia and um, s swinkles like the, you know, some academy players at the other end, but um, yeah, but yeah, uh, I, I don't really, I don't really know, I can't really describe what the night the atmosphere was insane. The only regret, I think, is the Pal Torres disallowed goal because that was right in front of us and it was just nuts, oh, and uh. Yeah. It's funny because it was maybe like in the 20, 30th minute, I got my phone out to take a picture of the scoreboard because it said 1-0. It's like, we might lose 5-1, oh, right. you know. Yeah, and yeah, literally, yeah. as I was taking the photo, it flipped to the VAR screen. So my picture's oh, just the right, VAR right. screen. <laughs> um, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> so, I mean, that was that was heartbreaking because, you know, the smoke, someone lobbed like a smoke bomb on the pitch and like, it was just mad. But um mm. Yeah. But yeah, we you know it was it was also crazy when this when when Duran's goal went in and then Emmy Martinez kept us in it and effectively won us the game with three great saves right at the end of the game and yeah it was a it was a, people weren't rushing to the to the it's one of the few games where I haven't seen people really heading to the exits on like eighty eighty odd minutes you know. Even mm. even in some big games, you know, you still see people going right. Got to make, got to beat the traffic. Mm. <laughs> um, but yeah, this was one where people really stuck around, and I suppose at a, almost a hundred pound a ticket, probably makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you got Bolo Bologna in a couple of weeks as well. Is that your next Champions League game? Yeah, I'm not going. It's really sad. Um, uh, well, bizarrely, bizarrely, Blues and Villa are both playing on the same night at home. Um, yeah, we're I playing don't know Bolton, why they're doing but, um, that. I don't know I, what they're thinking there. <laughs> I don't, I don't think there's going to be any police in your to game. The Wednesday. Yeah. No, no yeah, that'll be very strange. Well, um, we don't we don't play league cool, games fair enough. at home at the same same time. Like, why has one of us got a European game? I know, home? yeah. Because they have yeah, extra I'm, policing as well. It seems odd to me. But, yeah. yeah, or like I was certain they'd delay the Blues game to the Wednesday, but well, no, obviously not. Be interest interesting night in town. Hopefully it's uh, pretty calm, but just seems a strange one to me. Yeah, 
But yeah, I won't be there. It's the only Champions League yeah. game that I definitely can't go to uh, out of the at least out of the the league stage. So um, I guess if I was going to miss one, no disrespect to Bologna, but I'd probably miss that one. So yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. But yeah, in amongst other things, John Duran's had a great start to the season. He's got a new contract um, extension now, big pay rise. He's there till 2030 now. So it's like a Chelsea style huge contract I guess so, in, yeah. in length. Um, so yeah, fully deserved. I mean, I think I think we have forgiven him now for his, uh, <laughs> his <laughs> come on you irons on uh, Instagram early uh, in, in the summer. Yeah. Um, but yeah, one last thing before we talk about Birmingham City, Dan, I might have seen the I saw the one of the weirdest things I've ever seen in a football stadium at Villa Park on Sunday, the Man United game, and and there was a lot of tourists there, proper tourist match, half and half scarves, you name it. There was a guy four rows. I was also in the Trinity Road. Never haven't been in there in about four years. But there's a guy maybe three rows in front of me <laughs> with his phone out on facetime filming the game to someone like in career or somewhere it was like it was incredible <laughs> never seen anything although, like uh, although have you seen them things in like um the, i think it's one in like is it in los, los angeles there's like a bar and the, the, the whole wall is like oh, a God, screen yeah. what but the screen is like as if it's someone in the crowd like yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. pretty mad it's pretty it's very cool it's very yeah cool. and the seats are all like safe standing America, and but... stuff it looks kind of cool be fun yeah, to experience yeah. I think yeah, they absolutely. did Blues Rex. Did yeah, they do absolutely. Blues Rex in there? Probably. It wouldn't shock me. Yeah. And that's a lovely segue onto, um, onto Blues. Um, yeah, I believe the last game with Blues that I talked about was the EFL Trophy game against Warsaw, I think. So that was yeah. like over a month ago. That's about five weeks ago. Um, so since then, we have played we have a very quick uh, uh, rundown of the results. So... Obviously, last night, the only non-league game, um, we beat Shrewsbury 4-0 away in EFL Trophy last night. Uh, no, sorry, two nights ago at the time of recording. But otherwise, in the league, since we beat Wrexham 3-1 at home, we beat Rotherham 2-0 away, we beat Peterborough 3-2 at home, we beat Huddersfield 1-0 at home, and then we did lose 1-0 away to Charlton. First loss of the season. So that means after nine games, though, we are still top. And I think we've got a game in hand still on Wrexham, but yeah. not on, is it Man? I think Mansfield are... Um, uh, actually, on goal difference below Wrexham, but they're level on points with them, I believe. So, how do I feel? Basically, we're at this, we're in, coming up to mid-October, and it's just been really good. It's just been a really fun, enjoyable season so far. I think, uh, in, in my opinion, your sort of reaction to Villa maybe wasn't as glowing as I expected, but I think it's been a really positive kind of period for kind of football in this area. Really, um, maybe both the kind the Wolves. Of, uh, yeah, sorry, I mean, yeah, but if we're talking specifically yeah. about Birmingham, yeah, 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 um, we'll get on to yeah. Wolves. Yeah, we'll get on to Wolves, yeah. Um, no, but it's, it's been good. It's not been perfect, but it's been exciting and, like, it's been great to just dominating games. Like, that Peterborough game I mentioned, we were 2-0 down after, like, 20 minutes and Peacock Farrell was having a really... He, he was really struggling in goal. But it was never really in doubt. Like, when we turned it on, it was... Yeah, we pulled one back before half time and it was just never really in doubt. Like, we are... A level above the rest of the league, really. Stansfield is like a man. He's like a, a man playing against boys, or amongst like players of far lower ability than him. Um, and you can really see it, like when we start making these changes and we're bringing on players that can't even get in the team normally, like Mark Leonard or Lyndon Dykes or Alfie May. It really is remarkable. Going way back there, to that, there's, there's game. something to talk about in the last three weeks. You just said Alfie May can't get in the team. He was your man as of like a well, month yeah, ago. I mean, and I think that's the only thing which is not an, it's not an issue because it's a great problem to have. But yeah, so Alfie May came in and he scored four goals. And I can't remember if I said he scored four goals before the end of August. And I can't remember if I said this on the last episode we did. But I, I'm sure, I am almost certain, a lot of these players have came in in the summer and they've been signed to be the main man. So like Alfie May was the top scorer in League One last year. He was the PFA's player of the league in the uh, player of the year in the league last year. And now he's like not Really, he's not. He didn't score in all of September, and it, like we've signed him for less than a million pounds. He's going to be the main man. But then we've gone one better and signed Stansfield, and Alfie May probably had no idea that was going to happen, or certainly didn't expect it to happen. In there, I, I bet the Lind. I said, I'm sure I said this on the last one. 
the Lyndon Dyke signing, I bet, was made before they knew Stansfield was was coming. So that's kind of another one. Um, Mark Leonard was, by all accounts, one of the best players in League One over the last two years at Northampton. And we got him from Brighton. And now he can't get in the team because we then went and on deadline down signed someone in better in Tomoki Iwata, who is unbelievable. Him and Peck in midfield are a joke. They are like high-end high, high end championship standard players at the very least. They are unbelievable, them pair. Iwata's already got about three goals, I think. Um, yeah, they just absolutely dominated it. They were everywhere, especially in the Huddersfield game. They were everywhere. And so I think this is the only thing which I find a little odd with the way the team's been set up. Clearly, Chris Davies thinks Stansfield is the nine. He clearly thinks that's where he belongs. So as a result, he's kind of been forcing May in as the 10. And that to me is just, I've re- one, my, the one thing in football just drives me mad is square pegs and round holes. And like you play a player out of position and I'm like, surely we have a natural number 10 that can play there. But surely May's got to play as well. If it were me, I, I would try at least. Stansfield as the 10 and May as the 9. I think that'd be a huge success. Um, but oh, Davies seems very like, reluctant to do that. I mean, if you look at the way that we set up, which is like, it, which is a, effectively a 4 4 2, you, that, something like that could work with a box mm-hmm. midfield. Yeah. And I mean, they have dabbled in it, and there are times when May seems to be pushing up almost alongside Stansfield, but there's also times when he drops so deep that I'm like, like sure, that is not getting the. Alvin May is very competent eh? and he works really hard, but I don't think it's the best use of his abilities. But anyway, good problems to have, I suppose. Um, going back to that, obviously it was a little while ago now, but kind of a shame we didn't get to cover it in the moment, but that Wrexham game was unbelievable, like incredibly special. Obviously all the the big names were there and Brady came over for it and David Beckham was there and they both spoke really highly of, of how it all was. And is it Rob McElhenney who, who was involved with Wrexham was there. And obviously we went one nil down really early, but then to on that big night, it's big Monday night, beautiful summer evening sky. And um, it was just a big occasion, big atmosphere. And it was, we really, when obviously we went one nil down early, but we really turned it on after that. And once we equalized, there was no looking back. We were in, pure cruise control for like an hour of that game probably 70 minutes of the game and that was against one of our biggest presumably one of our biggest promotion rivals this season that was a really special night and so yeah it's just been a really fun season so far a lot of issues to work out still i mentioned with like the the may the whole stansfield and may thing and i think the goalkeeping situation has been inevitably Changed, Peacock Farrell's had a bit of a rough start to the season, made a lot of errors, made a huge error against um, Peterborough for the first goal. Huge error where the ball's come back to him from. Who played it back to him? Was it Clara? And he's um, he's taken a touch and tried to get out of his feet to play the pass out to the opposite wing. But he's just been closed down and we can we sit in the tilt and behind the goal and you can clearly see he's, as soon as he like takes the touch, he's going to get tackled and that's exactly what happened. So Ryan Allsop's coming for him now. That's an area of the team that I think I think will have investment in it if and when we go up. Um, I, I think a lot of the team is almost championship ready in many ways, but I think that's one position that isn't, in my opinion. Um, and the whole playing out from the back thing, it's still it, it's great to see and it's great to see the progress and it's great to see us trying to, to control games in this way, but it still looks so risky at times. I don't think it's quite settled yet. Um, but I'm you excited to see where it goes. Obviously, a by all... Well, yeah, true, true. Like, um, I'm I'm sure we will, but um, I'm just not used to it, Blues. I'm used, I remember when we tried to play out the back with Lee Camp in goal and um, like yeah, that Mark was never Roberts work. and uh, Jake Clark Salter at centre back. It was never going to work. So I get PTSD from that. By all accounts, the Charlton game, I didn't get to go. By all accounts, we were really poor, and it was by far our worst performance of the season. So we won't be going the year unbeaten. Let's not get too ahead of ourselves. I think we maybe almost needed a defeat just to be a bit of a Shock to the system. Obviously, some of our players have come out and said things like Belick and I think Alfie May have both came out and said that well, we're too good for League One, which is a bit of a silly, what slightly is he silly thing to about? say. I like I like a bit of confidence, but I think in keep the, it internal, I think it, in my opinion. In the dressing room, a hundred percent. But all you're doing is yeah. you know, is giving people ammunition in case you fuck up. It, it, it's, it's yeah, absolutely. It's just you, you're risking of being memed for years to come. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think I don't know if they, especially like Chris Davies, I feel like they are trying to create this like us against the world mentality, which I don't think is really necessary. I think we can win the league just on 
being the best, you know. Um, and you know, but it was good to see us bounce back from the Charlton game with the. I know Shrewsbury, Shrewsbury, and they're almost certainly going to finish bottom of League One. But um, to see us respond so well, I know there's like a thousand Shrewsbury fans and like four thousand or three thousand Blues fans are there. But I thought that's by the because way, a lot of a pro- as well. because of the protesting as well, because obviously of the under twenty ones teams being in it. Yeah, true. Of course, of course. But it was good to see us respond with such a dominant win. Our third goal, which Scott Wright scored, was absolutely beautiful. Um, proper one-touch football, great goal. And so, yeah, I'm just really excited for the rest of the season, looking forward to the games. So that's a really nice change from last year. It's actually a year ago today, I believe, that Rooney came in. And that feels like a million years ago. To think John Eustace was our manager this time one year and one day ago is wild because that feels like so long ago. Um, you probably so, won yeah, just as good. many games um, as you did last year already. Oh yeah, genuinely, I don't think we're too far off. We're probably I, I know we've already won as many away games as we did. And in fact we've won I think we've won more away. Yeah, no, we've won as many yeah. as we did for the whole of last season already. So yeah, really you know, not perfect, but really positive on the whole. So that's um that's blue so far this season, twenty four, twenty five. How does it make you feel, Dan, that you spent all that money in the summer and you don't even have the left the best player in League One? Are you, are you referencing Louis Barry? Or? I am indeed. He started absolutely fantastically oh. at Stockport this year, as he did last year before he got injured. Uh, yeah, he has. Stockport in general, to be fair, have come up and um, who's their manager? Um, what's his name? He was really, really highly rated. Challoner is it? Dave Challoner is that his name? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, meant to be really highly rated, to be fair. I think it got, is. he was linked with the. They've British got Jobs former actually, Birmingham so. City academy player. Uh, Odin Bailey, who I believe scored yeah. for you a few years ago as well. He did, yeah. He scored a great, uh, it was Borough? a great moment against Middlesbrough Friday night yeah. game. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, great. He's scored a header last minute. I hope it all works out for him because he was uh, always always get it what he had. Uh, cool. So that's all I had on um on the main blue stuff. Uh, before we get on to like the other Midlands clubs and just a little review on them, um, I was pretty much like doing his housekeeping with Villa and so on. So a little couple of bits with Blues. Um, so we released our third kit a few weeks ago. We've gone for a sort of, in terms of like the main color, not too dissimilar to our third kit from last year. It's actually not massively dissimilar cow to that sort of uh, away shirt you've got behind you just above your head. It's this sort of black and this gray, one, yeah. like, yeah, yeah, like a kind of mix of that. Obviously, the big difference is the badge and the sponsor are fully in red, like a sort of blood red and the, and the Nike tick and so on. Um, I think it's pretty nice. Uh, pretty nice. I'm not obsessed with it. I think it's kind of where I stand on all three of our kits this year. I think they're all pretty nice. Um, not there's there's no like all timers in there if you know what I mean. Um, I'm kind of famously against the concept of third kits anyway. Although I did buy our one last year. Just think it's a bit of a way to spin money out of fans really. But um, it's pretty nice. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Uh, Is it a bit disappointing that office. your kit, your third kit last year was black and it's black again this year? I know that I had that. Yeah, had with, a little bit, I guess. Like, I think our away gets white this year. It was white last year. Yeah, I think, and we got um, a blue third kit think, again. So. <laughs> yeah, I do think with a lot of our kits, they clearly just don't consult fans all that much. Like, no fan would design a lot of our kits over the last few years. Like, they, they were, you know, not that you should necessarily just do what the fans exactly want, but like, I don't know. Um, yeah, it's the. No, it's no it, the, the kits we've released they, this third kit is no one's ideal kit you know it was never i don't see it being anyone's favorite or anything um from over the years but uh yeah it's it's fine you know it's decent it's not awful or anything it's certainly better than that tiger one we had a few years ago the sort of um the the sort of whole tribute kit yeah. um uh but the only other stuff i really had on uh on blues was actually little uh just going to um mention the women's team briefly obviously blues women are now in the women's championship so they're in the second division um and they've actually started this season pretty well they're currently sitting third i think they've had five league games and they've won three of them they're currently on 10 points uh they started brilliantly i think it was it sunderland they beat five nil in the first game at St andrews um so it's looking really promising and um yeah, really positive start. Amy Merricks is the manager now uh, there. She's very young. I think she's like 32 or something. Um, obviously, Hope Powell, who used to be involved with the England women's setup, is now um, involved with uh, with Blues women. I think she's like the te- te- no, some sort of technical director, I believe. So that's really exciting. It'd be great to see them back in, in the WSL uh, from next season, hopefully. Obviously, they've got a little bit of work to do. I think they're a couple of points off uh, off second place, so a bit of ground to catch up, but it's very early days. 
And I think sort of Knighted have talked about it's not just the first team that they're going to be investing in, it's the academy and the women's team and so on. And it'd be absolutely great to see uh, Blues women get back up there. But yeah, brilliant start to the season. They won another game 4 0. I forget off the top of my head who it was against. So they're absolutely smashing the goals in for the first couple of games. Um, so yeah, really positive start to the season for Blues women. So we'll keep an eye on them uh, as the season goes along and hopefully they're back in the WSL. Uh, next year and it's also great to see the home games being played at St Andrews again I think that's really good and hopefully they can um, you know keep building the crowds up and so on and I believe I don't know if it's the case this season but last season it was if you had a men's season ticket you had like a free ticket to the women's games as well Um, so that's a pretty smart initiative to get people going Um, absolutely so with that Cal should we just have a very quick look at uh, the other Midlands clubs uh, this season yeah shall we shall we rattle through um might as well start yeah. with Wolves because that's the they've yes. had um well let's put it uh, let's not sugarcoat it they've had a terrible start to the season uh, their form yeah actually, they're um they their form the bad form goes back into the end of last year and they're not far off having just as bad a start to a season as the very famous Derby County side oh wow. They've only got one point. That's interesting because they're so definitely far. not that bad. Yeah, I mean, they're rock bottom. Obviously, they lost 5 3 to Brentford at the weekend. I didn't actually think they played Liverpool the other week. I didn't actually think they were that bad against them. I thought they were okay against against Liverpool. Um, and obviously, they they pulled it back to 1 1, didn't they? Right. Yeah, and against us, they, they, they started the game in the first half anyway. They were much better than us. But yeah, they sat back and tried to part the bus and it completely backfired for them. They lack a lot of goals, really. Um mm. and they're a bit leaky as well, to be honest. That it's hard to know what the oh, what just the a, fix is there. Just a bit. I think it's six is it sixteen goals they've let in or something absolutely mental. I mean if, if Brentford are a good team, well letting five in against Brentford is is scandalous. I feel like, you know, they've sold players like Neto and Kilman and just not invested to replace them at all. Um and I wonder with Wolves if their time is just up, you know, like teams naturally just reach the end of a life cycle in the Premier League. I we think, said um, this at the start you know, that... in our season season opener was that they were just drifting a bit. Mm-hmm. What are, we don't know what they are anymore. You know, they came up under no, under no. Nuno. They were exciting. It was mostly you know these hot Portuguese prospects. You know, Jota and Neves and you know um, Jamatinho, Rui Patricio. They had a great team, but the you know they've got themselves into some sort of financial difficulty. They keep selling, selling, selling. There's only you know we are great examples of there's only and there's so many other examples and Leicester, Southampton. There's only so many times you can keep selling your best players before eventually you go down. And yeah, Gary. Yeah, and I wonder if in a lot of trouble. Yeah, I think he must be the most under pressure manager in the league right now. Surely, do you think? Do you think there's any chance they get rid of him or? It's tricky because realistically, yes, you know, he's mm. he's quite a young manager. This was his first ever preseason. The summer just gone. Never never done a preseason as a manager before. But they did give him a big bump of four year contract, like at the back end of last year. So if they yeah. are in financial difficulties, they might not be able to afford to pay him off. Yeah, true, true. Um, but one to keep an eye on. I I think he's a really good coach and I think it would be a shame for them to get rid of him and I don't think it's his... I mean, the problem is deeper than him and I think getting rid of him would... I don't know. I almost see it like, you know, the year you went down and it was like you'd made the change but nothing improved. There was no logic to who came in next. Worse, so I think it probably anything. be a similar thing. Yeah, I wouldn't be shocked if a similar thing happens. They've got a big November coming up. They've, they're the only seven graces. They've had some hard games. They've played, obviously, Liverpool, Arsenal. I think they played Arsenal. Chelsea. Awesome. I think they're November. They've, uh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Um, from like November, they've got a lot of the sort of bottom half teams. So that I guess we can really judge them then. Um, moving on, West Brom started the season really well. Josh Madger was absolutely on fire. It's kind of dried up a little bit. They drew against Millwall at the weekend. By all accounts, a dreadful game of football. And before that, they lost to Middlesbrough at home, I think it was. Yeah. But they still sit fourth in the championship. They're doing a lot better than I thought they would this year, honestly. Um, but they're at their first sort of bump in the road um be interesting to see how well they kind of are able to maintain it carlos corbran i think is doing uh, an unbelievable job there um so 
yeah, we'll keep tabs on them. I think if Madger Madger's goals dry up, you know, I think that's one of them. Is it is he the source of like the bulk of their goals? Is it when he slows down, the team slows down? Is he maybe making them look better than they are? But I think I don't know. I've been impressed with them this year. I thought they'd really struggle. Not really struggle, but I thought they'd really fade away. I think they're in there. Is this their fourth straight year in the championship or third? Um, like that, yeah. yeah, so but it'd be interesting to see how they get on anyway. Um Warsaw, let's touch on them very briefly. They are still doing very well in League Two. Yeah, although they have, doing great. I think they've finally lost a couple of games. Yeah, I think they've now gone. I think they've gone three games without a win. They drew the last one and then lost the two before that. But they still sit top of League Two. When they played Blues last month at um, St Andrews, I thought they were way better than I expected. Um, Matt Sadler's got something going, something r- really good going there. So yeah, interesting. Credit to them because they've had a pretty rough sort of ten years or so. Warsaw. Um, but yeah, it'd be interesting to see how they get on in League Two. So, and then shall we have a look at quick look at Coventry as well? You know, we talked about them at the start of the season. They've been a bit yo yoey, haven't they? Um, so since we last spoke, um, they've kind of continued that sort of trend, to be honest. Um, although they have maybe struggled a bit more. They were so close to knocking Tottenham out in the in the League Cup. They were 1-0 yeah, up yeah. going in, just in towards stoppage time and just found a way to lose that game. Um, but yeah, they got battered by Leeds at Ellen Road. Um, they lost to Swansea at home as well. Lost to Sheff- Sheffield Wednesday at home. Uh, they did beat Blackburn in their 3-0 as well. So they have... Uh, They've been maybe been a bit slow starting. I think it's fair to say yeah. they sit 20th in the league, two wins from nine. Maybe a Coventry, bit they always do this though. Yeah, yeah they, they do. They, they, do they are this. a slow starting team, aren't they? I think even the year they got to the playoffs, they had a similar level of like start, to be honest. Um, I think well, that was the year Mark that um, after the Commonwealth Games, wasn't it, when they couldn't play, hard, oh, yeah, they had to play course, away yeah. for months? Yeah, of course it was. Yeah, absolutely, because the rugby had, had been there. Um, yeah, are, I think I uh, like speak to some Coventry fans, and they're like just not worried at all. I think this is just, just normal for them, and they have been disappointing. Um, like that Sheffield Wednesday loss they had recently, I remember there was, I, you know, just a real disappointment, and like I can understand maybe going to Coventry at the minute is not the most like this season so far hasn't been the most dynamic, and obviously they they do finish season so strongly. There's such a hangover going into it but I still think they'll do really well I still think they'll be in and around the playoffs come the end of the season Mark Robbins I think it's something like other than Pep Guardiola he's the longest serving manager in the top four divisions which is absolutely wild he knows what he's doing so stick with him I would um I think I think they'll have, I think this is just a blip I think they'll we're only nine games in out of 46 long way to go Cool. So that probably wraps us up for the week other than the fact that Scott Hogan now has a new club as well Dan um, oh yes I saw he's, this He's he's dropped down to League Two with MK. Yeah, um, but with MK Dons, uh, yeah, and you know what? MK, not the Dons. Uh, yeah, it's true. Um, but I think it's a decent signing for them. I know he's not everyone's cup of tea, but League Two has got some goals in there, I think. Um, and I don't know, I can kind of see the appeal for him. It's probably not too far from wherever he's. It's not too far from Birmingham, obviously. It's not only a couple hours away. If he was still living up this way, um, yeah, I don't know. I think he'll, I think he'll do decent. Be interesting if we play them in the EFL Trophy at some point as well. That'd be interesting. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll keep tabs on that. And oh, yeah. I, I did wonder if he'd like retire because it had been a little while. Kind of, um, mm. obviously we're into October now. He only just signed for them. I did wonder is is he just calling it a day? Because he must have had offers of some sort. Um, but no, yeah, good luck to him. Be interesting to see how he gets on. Yeah, getting firing. He will score a lot of goals in that league. Um, but anyway, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, return to the Second City podcast this week. Um, we're probably not as streamlined as we as we thought. But no, now. we had a lot of we'll lag issues. Back. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> unbelievable. Um, but if if you have enjoyed today, remember to like, share, and subscribe. Whether it's on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or or um, or wherever you can find us on Twitter. Uh, instagram and tiktok uh with the handle at second city pod yep that's two nd city pod uh and all the places callum just described yeah and we did i did post some tiktoks just just uh before our mini breaks so there is some new content on there if you haven't consumed it already there's a great one of dan going through uh the many signings of birmingham city uh in yes. the summer transfer window 
Yeah, wasn't it our worst? We did, we did a worst loan. What did we do? Worst loan 11 or best loan? No, best loans we did uh, recently, didn't we? We did best uh, loans for, as well, yeah. Yeah, that was great. Check that episode out because that's obviously one which isn't kind of limited to a time period. It was a really good uh, episode that we did. Uh, the last episode we did, actually. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for joining us again, everyone. Uh, we'll be back next week. Maybe, obviously, Callum's away again next week, actually. But we're going to we'll try and work something out. We'll definitely squeeze one in. We're pretty keen to avoid a, a break like we just did. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for listening. And until next time, keep right on, shit on the villa. See you next time, Dan, and up the villa. Yeah.